Hello again, I am Blunty, and as a fistful of you may already know, recently I've been streaming some Pokemon Alpha Sapphire stuff over there on Twitch. Just some low-key, relaxed post-game kind of stuff, like shiny hunting, exploring the Mirage Islands as they come in, and the roller coaster of emotions that is wonder trading. Always fun and simple, relaxed stuff, but I've been having a lot of fun. Anyway. I don't yet have one of those special modded 3DSs with a capture device thingy hacked into it. So the setup I've been using is pretty MacGyvered and a bit clumsy, but I've had several viewers on the stream ask about it and tell me that it looks better than most other non-capture device 3DS streams they've come across. So I figured it might be useful to go through it on video here to hopefully help out some other folk out there who'd like to do some streaming of 3DS games but don't have one of those modded capture device 3DSs, which are, well, they're not cheap. So it goes like this, headphones and microphone of course, as you would for any other stream, you could go for a combo headset, whatever works for you, but in my case, it's a Blue Yeti USB microphone I'm currently testing out for a future video right here on YouTube, and my faithful Sennheiser Momentums. Now, I started with the mic and the headset because please, please don't forget that audio quality is one of the most important things about streams, or YouTube videos for that matter, so pay attention to it, it's really very important. We've all heard those ear hole abusing streamers who huff into the mic constantly and have the sensitivity over cranked so every last syllable is distorted and exasperatingly unlistenable. <sighs> Sorry, just had to get that mini rant out of the way. It really does get under my skin. Uh, but now, the important thing about my MacGyver setup as it relates to streaming the 3DS specifically is as follows. Now, without a capture mod to feed the raw display data into the computer, we're left with the only real option of being to point a camera at the 3DS screens. You can use a webcam for this, but you'll get better results with something a bit more sophisticated and with better controls in particular for locking exposure and focus. Any camera with the ability to feed out a live picture over HDMI is what we're looking for here. Not all cameras will do this though, some only do playback and only a fistful will do it live with a clean feed out without a bunch of sort of interface overlays and text and graphics and stuff. You've also got to think about power, as relying on batteries in this setup will severely limit the amount of time you can stream, obviously. So, to sidestep all of that crap, I went with an iPhone. An iPhone 5S, as it happens, my old one that was doing nothing really in a draw since I upgraded to the 6 Plus model now. I used the standard Apple Video Out dongle to bring a live HDMI feed off the screen. Apple call this the Lightning Digital AV Adapter if you're going to go looking for it. So with this, I load up the stock camera app, not to record with the camera app directly, but so we can have the live camera feed on the screen feeding out through the AV adapter. So the HDMI from this feeds into my AvaMedia Live Gamer Portable Capture Device. Although there are many different capture devices out there that will get the job done too, of course, this one is my personal favourite. Back on the camera app though, you want to lock the focus and exposure so it doesn't drift and wildly vary when the display brightness varies with the game's graphics or even if your hand or stylus is going to touch the screen, that can change the whole contrast and brightness thing too. And as a side tip for using the iPhone specifically, I found that putting the iPhone's camera app into time-lapse mode will stop the yellow face detection box from randomly appearing as it will in the normal photo mode, which for my first few streams was well, pretty distracting and weird until I figured all that out. And of course, for this kind of setup, you'll want a tripod or a freestanding monopod to keep your camera steady and pointed at the screen correctly. I use a Manfrotto monopod that can freestand, but even a basic tabletop tripod will get the job done. But do pick something small as you'll naturally be sitting behind it and reaching around it to actually play the 3DS. So something big and bulky will make all that a huge pain in the ass and quite awkward indeed. You'll also need a way to keep the 3DS in precisely the same position, of course. I use a little tablet stand thingy. Please don't ask me where I got it or what brand it is or anything like that, because I honestly, I've long forgotten both those things, I'm afraid. Sorry, but it's gone. It's, it's, it's vacated my brain. Those with the 3DS stand that came with the 3DS Kid Icarus game could use that quite successfully, too. That's obviously custom designed for holding a 3DS. It will even work with a 3DS XL, all right. The rest of you, well, time to improvise, but do lock it down. Don't try to handhold it. I don't care how steady you think your hands are. I'm telling you right now, lock it down. Because the end result will be vastly more watchable and consistent. Of course, you'll also want to feed power to your 3DS. You don't want that sucker shutting down midstream thanks to the blinky red light harbinger of doom. And now for the audio side of things, this is really simple. You can just use a simple male-to-male 3.5mm stereo audio cable to go direct from your 3DS's headphone jack into the audio in on the PC. These cables are really easy to get, so you won't have any trouble finding one. 
It's simple enough, though in my case I had to put the tablet stand thingy on a small book to give me enough clearance for the cable I'm using. A cable with a right angle jack would be another way around this. So that's the basic setup. All you need to do now is set your levels for the audio feed, your microphone, and open your streaming software of choice. For most people, this will be either XSplit or OBS. Personally, I like OBS better. But whichever way you go, all you need to do now is set up your scenes and start streaming. In my case, I went the extra mile when I set my scene up. I created a little 3DS mask image with transparency where the screens are to overlay on the camera feed to hide the ugly cables and also the uh, the user interface bits and pieces from the iPhone itself. You know, the, the focus box and the and the, the mode switch and the shutter button on screen and all that. I hide all of that behind a little mask image. Um, it hides my hands on the controls and all that sort of stuff too. So all you see are the screens in a nice, clean graphic. No unnecessary distractions. It uh, it works really well. So yeah, pretty MacGyvered, but it is simple, and it is flexible enough for others to copy with many different combinations of equipment they could substitute depending on what you've got to hand. This setup does have weaknesses, of course. For one, I keep knocking the camera or 3DS out of alignment every now and then, so I have to fix that live on stream. Also, I'm obviously stuck, hunched over my desk, and that's a bit of a pain in the back. Uh, and the feed is nowhere near as clean or as crisp as a dedicated 3DS capture device mod can be. But... For those who can't yet afford a caption on a 3DS or just want to try streaming out to see if they actually enjoy it before investing all that money in specialist equipment, this will absolutely get the job done. It has been getting absolutely the job done for me. And uh, like I said, I've had people come into my stream and ask me how come it looks so good when I'm not using a capture device and all that sort of stuff. So hooray! Anyway, hope this has been helpful, informative, interesting, whatever. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.